and welcome to the next episode of the Mary Sue Game. Thank you for joining us. Today's episode is going to be the battle for Star Wars. Ooh. Ooh. So today competing we have Pocky and Gavin, and you're in the wrong spots. <laughs> I'm sorry. Change places. Change places. <laughs> I didn't know we had assigned seating. I'm sorry. <laughs> My bad, I'm dyslexic. Hi, Gavin. It's fine. Hi, it's I'm fine. Fucking, and I'm gonna win. <laughs> so, as kind of a catch up, um, so people will remember what we've got going on. So, they've been working on some Star Wars fan fiction. Um, in a few moments, we're gonna go ahead and pull a random trope, and they're gonna have five minutes to add that trope into their fan fiction. They're gonna be judged based on originality, adherence to canon, overused tropes, and personal life details. Let's go ahead and... So who are our judges? Let's introduce oh, them. Yes, our judges. So I've got Lauren. Hello. And Izzy with me today. Hello. Amanda's not here. She's here in spirit. She's here in spirit. She's here through me. I'm channeling her. So are you going to vote for who you want to win and then who you think Amanda would want to win? We could say that. We could also say my vote counts twice as much as Izzy's. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> so impress me. I'll <laughs> vote as well. Don't worry about this. I'll I, vote, too. I'm completely impartial. <laughs> She's not impartial. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and choose this random trope. Are you all ready? Uh, I'm ready. This is going to get. OK. <laughs> Rivals to lovers. Uh, that happens in Star Wars? What? <laughs> of course it happens in Star Wars. <laughs> Isn't that every character story ever? Of you course it is. Oh, of no. course it is. I never had to incorporate this one. What is Rivals to Lovers? They're characters who start out as rivals, but eventually fall in love. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, my character took a vow of celibacy, so I'm very confused right now. Good luck. I know. They can have a passionate, fiery... Intimate. I mean, it doesn't intimate. have to end with like consummation of the relationship. Yeah. I guess technically it does, does it? What? Well, it says lovers, which implies it's, yeah, yeah. It's consummation. Sorry, it doesn't have to be your main character. There just That's has true. to be characters that start out as rivals and then become lovers. Although this is my favorite trope, so if it is not front and center, I will be docking some points. Okay. <laughs> So, we'll go ahead and start your five minutes, okay? Five minutes. So, Lauren, let's talk about Star Wars. I have technically seen all of the movies. Yeah. Yeah. So, there are three major time periods within Star Wars when you're looking at the media. Because, of course, it's got this huge... Legend, or it's Star Wars Legends is what it's referred to a lot. Uh, it's got this huge canon. Um, they have books, comics, it's extended far beyond the movies. So we have the original moot trilogy mm -hmm. that is episode four, four. through <laughs> six. six. That's three. It's a trilogy. That's three. Yes, we know six. math. Um, and that's the story of Luke Skywalker becoming a Jedi, taking down Darth Vader. Then, of course, you have the prequels. And the prequels are my favorite, where you have the origin story of Darth Vader. They're certainly ostentatious. They're controversial. Yes. They are very controversial. <laughs> They're very political. <laughs> and then you have the That's new trilogy that we have going on right now that starts with Force, Awakening, Force Awakens and goes and to the last, movie last Jedi. Force Awakens 2. <laughs> the Rise of Skywalker is the last one, which hasn't come out yet. So I did fall asleep through halfway through one of the movies. I don't remember which one. It was probably one of the prequels, let's be honest. <laughs> it was in theaters. I think it was the one that was basically the same. It was like a prequel, but it came out like a couple years ago, that one. Rogue which one's one? that one? Or solo? Is it Rogue, Rogue one? one? Yeah. Oh, yes, Rogue One. Is that part so of the, let's talk about the Star Wars universe. <laughs> It's in space. Yes. <laughs> Dude, the <roof> have <laughs> so the concept of Star Wars kind of centers around the idea of the Sith versus Jedi and the use of the Force. Force is this mysterious kind of magic, pseudo kind of science force. Yeah. 
that they that Jedi's are able to use, and then the Jedi are good guys, and they have a council sometimes <laughs> when they're not all, when all the Jedi's aren't dead. And then you have the Sith, which they have a rule of two, so there can only be a master and apprentice, which seems like if you have a master and apprentice, they should be pretty easy to take out the bad guys. Like, there's only two of them guys, right? Technically? Yeah. Yeah, except they're, they have an army. They're yeah. slippery. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, Star Wars is about fascism. It's space fascism. Space yes. fascism. <laughs> Where could you go wrong? Where, yeah. <laughs> but... So, so, may, so how do you expect there to be a lot of main players from the original canon in these fan fictions? I would say so. I, like, I would expect so, but knowing these guys, they're probably going to get a little bit deeper into the lore than I know. So I'll be lucky if I know like three of the characters. I'm sure like the big ones will be named, but yeah. I feel like it's going to be a little bit more off the maps so to speak. What are some overused tropes do you think that you're going to be expecting to see? Um, Obviously definitely. rivals to lovers. Oh, yeah. well, <laughs> rivals to lovers, yeah. Yeah. There definitely has to be some sort of like reunion, sort of like a, a familial tension reunion. Or oh, like yes, a yeah. Past lovers reunion or something where two people come together and they're like, we no longer see eye to eye, but... So yeah, I don't know. I feel like that happens in every movie, every Star Wars movie. Yeah. <laughs> Someone gets okay. delimbed. <laughs> okay. Well, that is pretty much the five minutes. So, Pocky, if you want to go ahead and come up here. I'm ready for this. Y'all threw me in a loop with that, that magic. I, hey, hi. Hi, Pocky. And this is my uh, Mary Sue story, Zalul and his patient. Zalul is a Mediterranean, a green plant-based species from a basically marshy-style planet, much like Dagobah. His species is somewhat Force-sensitive, which makes them prime candidate for the Open Hand Society, a group of almost Jedi-like spiritualists who roam the galaxy believing not to stay in one place, but rather experience the Force in all life and all of its glory, only staying long enough to help others that need help. Zol was a prime member of this organization, a man who believed in traveling the world, not taking life, but rather helping. Zol had already been traveling with Roland, a gunner, Velvet, a guardian, to Liam, a pretty boy who was sent on to help become a better smuggler, and Captain Ness, a master <laughs> captain of some indeterminate species or gender due to the hazmat suit that they basically indefinitely stayed in. Zolo was sent on a mission by Maz. Maz had requested him personally to do this, both for his discretion and his willingness to take a basically job if it was because someone was in trouble and he desperate, desperately needed help. Zolo was requested to help his patient. He was not told his patient's name, but rather his looks and his description, basically because basically Maz said, when you see him, you'll understand. Maz's patient was lost. But this was not the most important thing to Maz, because of many things, Maz knew that the patient probably could take care of themselves by the description of the patient. Rather, a new recruit he had just put into the order, a young smuggler who was now converted to his order, had also been kidnapped around the same time, and he uh, was going out to Maz's place to go find out what happened to his new recruit, his new member of the order. Well, Maz, when arriving to the planet, saw a decadence of life and think, that life and people enjoying it. He appreciated it, but recognized also that it was way too much for him. Maz did not care for much of the noise. He did enjoy this quietness of a med bay, which he would spend most of his time out with Roland and the team. Now, Maz. Now, Maz looked at him with her big glasses, staring at him in the face. Looking at him, he knew that she was basically peering at his future or past. Or he was never sure. He just knew that for some reason she could see things that no one else could. She said that the patient and his new recruit was lost. The new recruit that did not forego his name and just called himself Recruit for some reason. This was confusing to Zulu and actually anyone really who dealt with the recruit. Well... It turned out that 
through some investigation that Zalul realized what had happened. Someone had made a bad deal, we're assuming the patient, and had gone horribly, horribly wrong. And somehow his new recruit had gotten mixed up in it. He would now have to go exploring around the area. Tatooine is where he ended up for some bizarre reason in an outer space no area that no one should really visit. It's hot, and he was planned, and it was dry. He didn't like this. He wanted back in a moist, nice air-conditioned ship. Moist. He doesn't like heat. Well, there was the, the patient and his new recruit being held. But surprisingly, his new recruit was arguing with his captor, a female. And so I walked up. My recruit, what is going on? As he looked over at the crowd, who even the other smugglers were confused at best. And some of them were even whispering the mummers of mutiny because it turned out for some reason, they were sent on a dumb errand they weren't going to get paid for. It's her fault, he says. Recruit, one, why did you take the name? And two, what is her fault? You got captured. That is what smugglers and kidnappers do. She lied about, Zolo says, even more confused, with the rest of the crew nodding in agreement. Well, he says, she said he owed her money. He disagreed. He also said that he apparently needed help with something about his son. I don't know. Finally, seeing the patient, he lived up to his description. Rugged, somewhat good looking, in his maybe 50s at this point. It was hard to tell with normal humans. But the brown leather jacket, uh, vest, the tan shirt, and the black pants David gave it away. His nickname was Han, or maybe it was his real name. I never know. <laughs> I have to take him up. You solve this issue. As he was patching up Han, and Han was complaining about his son he needed to go find, it was revealed, finally, what the entire problem was. It turned out that the recruit and this captain called Blood was actually a recruit at the same time as him, immediately became a captain due to being overly aggressive, and she wanted to recruit him back. He would have none of it, and in doing so, argued presentiously until one of them started kissing the other one, proclaiming their love that he was actually in love with her and always wanted her to be around, and convinced him somehow, convinced her somehow to join the order. Sol took all this with a grain of salt and told him to go back to the monastery. Generally, this was confusing to Zul, and we didn't get it, and neither did the rest of the crew that just left for unknown reasons that everyone generally is confused. This would make a really bad movie, Sol said to himself as they walked away. All right, we ready? You all ready for this? All right. So I find myself staring upon the greenness of Endor below me from the viewport. I really hate the color green. I don't think I've ever actually been someplace with this much life, and I can't wait for this Death Star to get built so we can be destroyed and just take out that much more of the rebellion spirit. As I sit there staring, I hear ST0 and 3. It snaps me out of my... Funk and I look over and I see P0CK1 walking my way. Back to work, I have to say. See, he's my partner in more ways than one. And we've been trying to track down some Imperials, some rebel spies within the Death Star that we know are here. We have one suspect, and I have a feeling this is him telling me we've got her and we're ready to go find out what she has to say. So P0CK1 comes up to me and says, We've got her. So I knew he would. Let's go. As he tries to grab my hand, I pull away saying, you know, not in public. They don't like it that way. So we race off to the interrogation room, and lo and behold, I find the worst to the bad guys, the best to our guys, interrogators, of L4UR3N and L1554. The best in the business would need information as someone. And just seeing them makes me excited because, oddly enough, strapped down, ready to be interrogated, 
is R zero B four N. I knew there was something shifty with this this soldier. Stormtroopers just don't get made that way. We interrupt as the exact time as she started. Sparks are flaring. The interrogator droids are going and. L1554 is going, tell me what you know. And she's screaming, I don't know anything. I will tell you nothing. I, I don't know what to expect from this. This, she's, it's a stormtrooper. I don't think we're getting anything out of her. So just as R0B4N passes out, right before she does, she looks at us and goes, they're closer than you think. And then she just passes out from the pain. So we're kind of stuck back at square one. And we decided we need another lead. So I asked L4UR3N where they found the interrogee, and they told me down in the bars with some other people. She told me who they were, so I get with P0, I need to remember these names, CK1, <laughs> and we get going on the way. But as we're going, we know that there's this weird incursion going down on Endor, and I'm thinking, there's no way they know our only weakness of sticks and stones. I mean, no one knows that in the face of the planet. It's a bunch of rebels and teddy bears. What could they possibly do? Well, just then the entire Death Star shakes. Uh-oh. Something is definitely going on, I'm thinking. I look over to P0CK1, and I'm like, what do you think it is? He goes, you don't think the rebels know our weakness, do you? There's no way they know it. Nah, there's no way they know it. We know we can't shoot very well, but we got impenetrable armor, except for earthly elements, like rocks and stones. Well, then the Death Star starts shaking really badly, and P0CK1 gets a message in his comm, and I'm thinking, that's really weird, because I don't hear it. There's blind, sirens blaring everywhere, stormtroopers are running everywhere. And that's when he looks at me and says, we have to get out of here. I'm like, what do you mean we have to get out of here? The rebels have breached the base. There's no shields. They're going to start an assault on the court. I said, how do you know all this? And he goes, I've been the rebel leader. I've been the insider this entire time. And I lose it. I'm like, you loved me. And you kept this secret the entire time. And he's like, yeah. And I go to punch him. But then there's a huge explosion. The barrier falls between us. The roof falls in. And there's fire everywhere. And he's on their side. I'm on the side. I'm so furious. He goes, I'm going to find you. Get on escape pod. I said, I'll find you and I'll kill you first. He looks, shakes his head and he just kind of runs off and I'm stuck wondering, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So I make my way to escape pod as the whole place is starting to blow up and explode around us and I hit that button. I zoom out of this Death Star and I see ships flying everywhere and there's battles and indoors like just there and I'm like, what the hell's going on? I'm just full of hatred because I can see his escape pod flying off into the Rebel Armada and I'm off into the other Armada and I'm thinking, what am I going to do? I'm going to find him. And I'm going to have my vengeance for him betraying the Empire, destroying the Empire. So I set my coordinates to go find Theron's fleet, because I know that's the only chance I have, because they're dying out here. So I set my coordinates, I harden my heart, and I just fly off into outer space looking for Theron. And I'm done. That was mine. <laughs> All right, thank you. That was pretty good. Y'all both did really awesome. Mm -hmm. Can so, I just say I was nervous to do this because I know I'm taking on Robin at some point in time and I don't want to give her a taste of my skills, so. <laughs> 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 I like the way she just laughed at me. It's cute that you think you have a chance. <laughs> I, I, I'm just, I'm like, I know I'm going to lose this one. I'm like, I'm like, because even I'm like, wow, I did not see that one coming. <laughs> that was good. All right, so Lauren, let's go ahead and start with Pocky's fic. Okay. What were some things you liked? Um, I loved how like detailed the backstory was. <laughs> I thought it was really cool, like the kind of world that you set up, and within Star Wars, I know it was Star Wars, but like your kind of like new force, like kind of pseudo Jedi's was cool. Um, I didn't have much for canon. I wrote literally under my like adherence to canon section. I wrote Maz. Big eyes? Question mark. <laughs> she was the bartender in episode seven, and uh, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, she was I a really you. weird one. Um, I thought the like convoluted plot was also good adherence to canon. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I love that you had the kind of like savior complex trope where the main hero is like always right. He's like always on the moral path, and everyone else is kind of like messing up around him. But he's like always like straight center. What do you think of the cameos of some pretty important characters? I think I missed them. I did. Han Solo. Han Solo. Oh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember Han Solo. The rugged. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And his love interest. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yes. Love interest. Because that's that was a good way to use the. 
rivals to lovers trope. Yes. That's true. Yeah. It was, yeah, the, I think it was weaved in really nicely. Yeah. The trope was, yeah. All right. Izzy, what did you think? Uh, yeah, I have a lot of similar thoughts. I liked how you made, like, a completely, at least I think, a completely new planet that hadn't been mentioned before, no. unless I'm missing something. No. no. Oh, no. it's, this planet exists. Never Tatooine mind. Tatooine is the one. No, 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 no not what? Tatooine. It said green, the green plant based that's planet. Not Tatooine or something. Or no, yeah. No, that's, Tatooine a, that's was, also yeah. a planet. That's also a planet. Oh, right. okay. Well, never mind then. My, my, my character is based off a role playing game I'm playing. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one of the things that we talked about. Star Wars has infinite number of planets and races. So much merchandise. So much stuff. So much <laughs> opportunities. But yeah, I like that there's a. Jedi like race. I liked that Maz with her big glasses. Now that I know who sh she is, like, is like can see everything. And that's awesome. Like the Han Solo cameo. Although not sure if you'd call that a cameo in fan fiction, but you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah, <laughs> we use the same terms. It's fine. Yeah. All good All right. thoughts. So, Lauren, let's go ahead and jump over to Gavin's fan fiction. Um, I have to say, RB, whatever, 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 sounds pretty cool. <laughs> R0B4. I loved the. She's kind, great. I loved the kind of like Holden Caulfield's beginning that you had where you were just like, oh, everything's terrible. <laughs> it like really endeared me to your character. Um, and I was like immediately on board with your uh, little like. Um, partner relationship. It was beautiful. Um, I thought the terrible names of everybody being like A, B, 6, 7, 4 <laughs> was very spot on canon. <laughs> Where you're like, I don't know who that is and they might be important. I don't know. Um, I loved there was a cool fight scene that needs to happen. And you did do lovers to enemies with a hint of perhaps lovers later <laughs> or that's what well, I hope. I would say but it was kind it's of post flip. the because like I would say that they were rivals at one point because one of them was the rebel and then they fell in love oh so okay. just from the rebel's yeah. point of view yeah makes sense okay I like that now yeah. I want to read that fanfic yeah, yes. now you have to write that fan fiction. I love the... I totally can. I got it all written out here. Yeah, so do it. up with names and numbers for y'all was hard, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good job, though. You did good. I love the betrayal, the information mm -hmm. via dying woman. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. A good trope. <laughs> good trope. Good trope. Yeah. Solid. Okay. Um, do y'all want to talk amongst yourselves and come up with a winner? Does Izzy not get to talk? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Izzy, what do you like about Gavin's fan fiction? I liked, like, first the, you know, the point of view from the evil side, given that Star Wars has this very, very black and white, good versus evil narrative, like, 99% of the time. And uh, I like that the final woman, I don't remember her name, a bunch of, like, letters and numbers stood up to torture, and she parted the exam. Yeah. <laughs> Me. Yes, R0B4N. Yeah. <laughs> And then was crushed to death. I was, yeah, I died. <laughs> oh my god, I just got that. <laughs> you were, you were that y'all were the torturers? <laughs> you did not get the you also were the torturers? <laughs> when people say numbers at me, I just like black out. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't realize it. It's wow. fine. <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> you don't get the torturers. Okay, I get it. Um, you don't get bonus points for squad inclusion. <laughs> Especially not if we're torturers. I get trauma? into it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just okay. Okay, continue. I'm sorry. Is he? Oh, yeah. Um, I liked that there was the big reveal at the end. Uh, I liked that, you know, good adherence to canon, trying to find rebel spies on a ship, uh, as well as the fact that there was a big explosion, because Star Wars needs big explosions. Yeah, always. Yeah. Well, do you all kind of have a consensus? Do you all want to talk amongst yourselves? Yeah, we'll talk for a second. Okay. But like we'll do this. Good job. Yeah. So you can't hear us. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the, the lovers one threw me off. <laughs> That's what threw me off. So I had to make it up that you know you know I had a secret relationship till the end. I was like, I don't know how I feel about you being your lover now. I yeah. Was yeah. You're, you're she got tortured. That? Yeah. I got tortured. And then and then he crushed her to death underneath the ship. Yeah. I just wanted to torture. Now. Are this you ready? He runs the studio. I mean, come on. <laughs> 
Okay, Basel, come on up here, and we will go ahead and announce the winner for the Mary Sue battle for okay, Star good, Wars. Okay, good. I'm on the right side. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even pay attention to that. No, come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hands. All right, and the winner is Kevin. Yeah. 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 So I think it's because I it. It's only because yeah. I tortured her, right? I mean, that definitely didn't hurt. Factor did. <laughs> Take your yes, cannon, take your, your Mary Sue belt. championship belt. But she gets to get back immediately. <laughs> yeah. Now Robin knows what she has to go up against at some point in time for a finale. Whoa. Yeah, that will. That, Just that's so you know. I'm going to win. I'm going <laughs> to win. So, Pocky, this is your second time being on the Mary Sue game. Yes. And you lost Twice. Two. Yes. Are you ready to come back for another episode and win? Yes, I hope. Because I already know what my next one I want to do is. Okay. So, so what is it? I want to do my Hero Academia. Okay. So you hear that, guys? Open challenge, Pocky, My Hero Academia. Yep. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us for this Mary Sue battle. Um, go ahead and join us next week where it will be Inuyasha. Awesome. Sick. Oh, <laughs>